Well, here we are back again. My name is Stephen Gia Taylor, uh, Northern Wilderness Bushcraft and Folk of the Forest, uh, Boar Wilderness Club. Um, I'm based in County Durham, if you can't tell by the accent. <laughs> but yeah, pretty much, this is my channel. I hope you enjoy some of the videos uh, I bring to you guys. But today we're going to be looking at knives. So basically, I want to look at sharp edged instruments or tools to what we use within the bush and if I can a little bit about the law but the law is a bit of a great area so you all should double check everything but let's have a look at edged tools. So we want to have a look through some of the tools that maybe I would I would recommend these actually yes I would um, I'm gonna go through each individual knife um, saw axe things like that and have a chat about each individual thing and explain some of the differences and what I would kind of recommend for maybe new bushcrafters or even the seasoned bushcrafters but most people that's seasoned in bushcraft have got their own way of doing things or their own knives and things like that they like to work with now one of the biggest questions I get all the time is what kind of knife do I need now it's, it's like anything, this is the fun side of bushcraft. Um, realistically, we love to collect kit. We love buying knives and stuff like that. It's part of the tools of the trade. There's something kind of dangerous about them and something kind of naughty and also illegal about them. But I think that kind of makes them attractive to most people, the fact that they want to get something which is, you know, the look nice, the craftsmanship, the old world traditional tool that we absolutely adore. So what we're gonna do, guys, have a look through the different knives that we have on here and find at what place in bushcraft these things have from open nail folding knives through stainless steel blades neck knives bushcraft and how they're sharpened and you know different tools of the trade we're also going to look at the axe as well which is over here we'll talk a bit about axes and we're also going to have a quick chat about saws uh, saws as well so it's edged tools now the first knife i really want to show you guys is this thing here now this is my everyday bushcraft knife i originally got this um sorry, sorry off camera there i originally got this guy here for students. Uh, I bought a load of these for the students and stuff like that and actually I was that impressed with it. I, I, I kept, I've kept a couple actually as backup knives. The thing I love about knives, especially knives like this, this is an inexpensive knife. Now I've got a Ramey's Woodlaw, I've got quite a few knives by quite a few um, you know well-known knife makers. Um, some of the knife makers have got crazy cues to even get knives off them these days and uh, luckily I got them back in the day before they were so famous. But knives like this fit around the 25 to 30 pound mark. Yes, 25 to 30 pound mark. You thought, when you look at it, the rosewood um, scales, the actual fire lighting tool itself on the side here, the, the furrow rod, um, the leather sheath, the blade itself. You know what I mean? You look at it, you wouldn't expect this to go for that kind of price. It's a solid tool, and this one here is about three year old now. I use it weekly, if not daily, some cases, not just myself, but students use this tool as well, as many as many others. It's actually been battered to death, it's used for batting in, it's used for everything. Now, I want to explain to you why I use this knife and a few things about it. So let's have a quick look, a bit closer at the knife itself. It's basically a knife to what a bushcrafter will use in the wilderness. Now, this knife here, for instance, it comes with a basic leather sheath. It is very basic. It's not very the most, you know, flexy and nicest sheath in the world, uh, but it does work for the price. Inside of here, we have the knife. Now, knives to me are tools, and they do need a bit of maintenance, a bit of love and a bit of care. Um, this knife here, first of all, it's what we call a full tang knife. A full tang knife is where we have the butt of the knife to the tip of the knife is all one continuous piece of metal running straight through, as you can see here. There's no breaks inside the metal. The handle inside, the only hold it should have in a handle, should be for the lanyard, should be for the rivets to keep it together, and that should be it. There should be no centre piece of the knife cut out for weight or anything like that. If you've got that, that's a point to where it can break, like some of the Enzo trapper knives, things like this. This knife is a solid one piece knife. Now, with the grind on this, this is not a Scandi grind. Now, I will get this out of the way straight away. I am not a fan of Scandinavian grinds. Now, I'm going to explain what a Scandinavian grind is, and I'm going to show you closely so you can see the difference. Right, first off, the knife we have here is a Scandinavian grind. Now, I want you to notice this, a few things about it. Obviously, there's a back knife. This is a, this is a neck knife I've got here, okay? Now, you can see the bevels, the edges, which got one in the center here, running through. And you've got another one on the bottom there. Basically continues all the way down. This knife is all pitted and rusty. It gets used uh, quite a lot outdoors. 
and uh, this is a carbon knife I'm going to explain about carbon in a minute you can see all the rust and patina on this I like the way it looks I've, uh, that's why I don't clean this it's meant to be a ratty neck knife as you can see by the old style on it but what you can see here is the grind it goes straight into a single point see that there now to sharpen this kind of knife you do need some kind of stone you need also an ability to be able to sit and work the knife continuously over and over either side roughly about seven strikes either side to start getting an edge on it and then obviously you can finish it off with stropping as where well. you use some leather and you move it up and down against the leather to put a finer edge on it now there's many knife connoisseurs out there that will argue different ways of doing these things but this knife here is a Scandinavian grind. Now most people recommend Scandinavian grind knives to new beginner bushcrafters however I do not. I think it's a really bad choice for, for you guys to go for and the reason to do this is profit. Things like Mora knives, things like that are built with Scandinavian grind knives. I suppose you to learn you how to be able to strop knives and use knives to sharpen them and things like that and that is all good and well but in reality when you're working in the woods and you're doing your bits and pieces unless you've got time where you just want to sit and work with it you can sit and do your knives in reality though when you want to sharpen a knife quickly you don't want to be messing around with any kind of oils and things you don't want to mess around with water stones you just want to sharpen your knife you know what I mean and get on with the task at hand so I'm going to explain a bit more about this now so this is a, this is a Scandinavian style knife now as you can see here we have my as you can see here this is my bushcraft knife the basic one I use Okay, so this knife here has got a different edge on it. Okay, so you see that edge there. See that where it doesn't go flat, it's got a secondary bevel. So what you've got here, you've got a top bevel across the top here. And as it comes down, we've got a secondary edge. It goes over a lip and goes in, then into a point. Okay, you see that there? This knife I find extremely easy to sharpen. This one here is a carbon based knife as well. And it's got a bit of dirt in it where I was using it the other day, it's actually, you know, battered. This knife is what I call a junk knife, okay? So this is my dirty knife. This is a knife I use for just day to day, hacking, bashing, you know, all the different things. And you can see here where it's brown, right there. This here is where the striker is. You can see it's got this grooved out section. And it's in here to where I would actually put the ferrisium rod right there and it's here to where I would slide it down the frisian rod and that's what creates the sparks but it does go all over the knife. I have actually used this edge piece here right in the edge so I get a really good dig and get a really good bit of spark so it's not the sharpest I don't, I'm not, I'm not bothered about that because I've got a whole other part of the blade to use but this knife here is a lot easier to sharpen as we'll demonstrate next. Here is the basic shop and I think this costs like one or two pounds or something like that from online so you can see it says coarse and fine on there. Um, very simple, keep your fingers out the road you can start with this side, we'll start with the course, place the knife in so it's all the way in and you just simply pull it back all the way. Make sure you get the edge of it, the tip and you just basically want to pull the knife through. And I know there's going to be loads of people out there going, oh, that's not the way to do knives. Tell it is. I've done this since I've been a tiny, tiny child and it works for me. This knife's three year old, it works, it's used. It's a proper knife. It's not a show piece. It's not a piece of jewellery. I wear around my belt when I walk around the bushcraft show, giving it the big one. This is a knife which is used daily, if not weekly, and it's used not by me, just by other people as well. It's always sharp, straight, easy to use, good, hard work and tool at a price range that you can't argue with. It's a four mil tang knife. So it's got four mil of metal in there. That's a minimum. Three mil is really the minimum. I wouldn't recommend 3 mil, 4 mil is really where you want to be at, especially if you're going to start batting a knives. Batting a knives is where you place a knife over a piece of wood and you hit it over the top to knock through the wood to make um, lats or tables or whatever to, whatever you need it to, to split the wood for. Um, but this knife, here it is, that's the one that I go to. Now, this is a ferrisium rod, this should always accompany uh, your knife really, it depends. Some people use lighters or whatever like that, you can see this one's been well, been well used. But the knife itself, you can see that there goes in that piece there so if I can just get it I don't want to shoot the sparks off right now you're meant to use this bit here to be honest with you I use a tiny little corner piece there and I'll show you the difference see that couple of you get some sparks but it, it's it's not the knot's not the greatest you know what I mean now if I put on this bit here 
<laughs> Look at that bad boy. You can hear the difference. That's that's gonna light your fire. And really, have I damaged the knife? Let's have a quick look. You can see here. Right. That tiny, tiny, tiny little edge is all I'm using in my blade. I've got that whole knife for cutting with. So when you guys are commenting my video and going, oh, you're using your blade, you're going to damage your blade. Listen, I've been doing this for absolutely generations now. I mean, over 30, I mean, what, 30 years I've been doing this. I've been in the woods since I was a tiny, tiny kid. So knives, I'm used to working with. All right. Um, if I want to sharpen it, I'll give it a quick sharpen. Give it a quick run through, right from the edge as well, get right up against the side there so I can give it a good sharpen. It's not going to make any difference to my knife. You don't want to, however, be using the middle of your knife right there to do it, or the edges and stuff. That's just, that's just redundant, so don't do that. If you've got to use the edge of a blade, you want to do it here. Now, something I will say, to get a knife that works to create the spark, it needs to be a carbon knife, stainless steel doesn't necessarily work the greatest. I've seen people create sparks off them, but it's a hard bit of graft. Um, not really recommended. Now, why do I like this knife over Mora? I haven't brought a Mora here today because I've only got one of them left. I got rid of them all because they're absolute, well, not saying the rubbish. They are okay knives. They've got rubberized handles for starters, so they're easy to grip, so you don't slip. This one's a wood handle. It's natural. I'm bushcraft. I like, I don't support the plastic industry. I support this, the wood, and this is, can regrow, really okay? Um, now, the other thing about this is it's a full tang. More is not a full tang. More is generally a stick tang. In other words, a stick tang is where a knife breaks down into a smaller point and comes into the handle, and the knife disappears. You can't see the, the edge of the blade like you can on this one. That means only got a stick going into the handle itself. So if you were using it in a hardcore stuff, for day to day basis, say you were going to be doing a lot of batting, and it's very easy to split that knife, break the knife. I believe the mower is only around about a three mil tang. I could be wrong, I'm not a fan, put it that way. For the price of them, they only cost 12 quid for a mower a knife, or I can spend and get these for 24.99 each with leather sheaths, with the ferro rod, with the wood handles, and the scales and stuff like that. It's going to last generations longer, it looks more professional as a customer coming to work or coming to enjoy something at Northern Wilderness, you want to be happy to use a decent bit of kit. If someone sticks a bit of plastic rubbish in your hand, as a wilderness person, you might just go, oh, fair enough, because you probably went all the Gore-Tex and all the rubbish that goes along with it. But for me, I'm leather, I'm wool, I'm wood. Okay, I'm traditional, and this is what I like. And this, for me, works. I love the brass, I love it all. It works brilliantly. Kind of stress enough. So now, let's have a look at the next kind of knife. Now this knife here is one of the more fancier knives I have, and it's not an expensive knife, believe it or not. I've got three knives, different sizes. This one is the medium, I believe. I've got one which is about this much longer, and I've got one which is really small. These are like a snub nose knife, and what they're called is trade knives. First of all, look at the leather detail on here and stuff. Now I do understand that this was made in like Pakistan or India or somewhere like that, um, but I do like it, you know. I do like the little leather tassels, the beads. Um, it's called a trade knife. So this is from the Mountain Man era, and a trade knife would have been used in trade. This one's got um, walnut scales on there. If I open this out, you can see the snub nose blade. You can see it's well used as well. It needs a bit of a clean. Again, this is a carbon blade, but you can see it's got a secondary bevel on there, again, for sharpening. And that's just dirt by the way, it's not chipped. Um, just for sharpening on there. It's very easy to sharpen, easy to maintain. Right, guys, here's the question for this video. If anyone knows what this bit here is for on a knife, answers below. You didn't win anything, you just get props for being a clever smart ass. alright? So props if you know what this bit is for on the knife. Any ideas, put them below and we shall find out. Right, so this is the snub nose knife, as you can see. Snub nose because it's got snub nose. It doesn't got a direct point on it, so it's not so easy to stab yourself with. I can just press against that, it won't cut me or hurt me. Uh, the edge of the knife is a very sharp knife. I find this absolutely brutal, and I, I, you've probably seen in my videos, I do a lot of like stick work with it and stuff like that. It is really my cleaner knife, and this one's by Red Deer. The other knife, by the way, I did show you before, that other one, um, it doesn't have a maker's name or anything like that, it's just a guy I know, get them off. This one here does say, made in Pakistan. Okay, so it's probably supporting some sort of slave labour industry, uh, hopefully not. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful knife, I love it, I don't care what it is. Three knives, £30. This one's coming up two years old. Again, 
used again pretty much daily for all sorts of tasks holds a knife edge outstanding bit of kit really good tang full tang all the way through brass rivet trade knife not only is it historical not only have i got a really pretty sheath that goes with it um <laughs> pretty because it is pretty um as it goes with it and it's got a lovely design to it and stuff like that uh, you can see that there it's got red day and it's got this like kind of stuff on there it's got the beading it's got you could take the lanyard and you could change this for some nicer lanyard uh, but this here can go over me like so and I can just wear the knife here I was down by my side like a holster and I can take it out and use it as and how I need to okay so the knife itself absolutely crack a knife for the money so you don't have to go out 30 pounds think more than look at that come on spend that little bit more money get a knife like this that looks nice a talking point around the fire doesn't break the bank it's just a generally good knife you know everyone's got their opinions it's got the small it's got a small little hole in the bottom there i don't even see that tiny little hole that let any damp out and stuff like that really good now this like i said this is carbon one thing you gotta understand about leather it's real leather what you gotta remember when you're working or in the woods and stuff like that when you come out of the woods you want to give all these knives a clean this one hasn't been clean since last well about three to four days ago um you should really clean them stop them from rusting i quite like the patina when they start having a little bit of patina and rust to them and stuff like that but really what i'll do is oil them clean them if i need to when i get home and um, what i'll use is either lard which is like a pig fat i use coconut oil olive oil any kind of really oil even gun oil um i'll clean them off with a soft cloth uh, even oil the handles things like that um keep the moisture out i'll oil the leather as well uh with the same thing with the lard and things like that but it depends what area you're in obviously don't be spreading lard all over your knives and your kit if you live next to bears or wolves or some shit <laughs> you may get chomped on in the night wake up and something's like nibbling on your knife right the next knife i want to show you guys is the open l i believe this is the number six now, there's a big debate on facebook about these kind of knives and stuff like that now first of all right people on facebook are like oh i wouldn't bank my life on it or well, i'll be really really worried if you're banking your life just on this little knife but in a survival situation it's all you had that's all you got you know there's many other ways of using tools to be honest with you in a survival situation you don't need a knife it comes in handy you don't need an axe it comes in handy but you can make these things from primitive tools as you've probably seen some of the primitive videos out there now open l number six this here is a beechwood handle and it's a very beautiful little handle um banging little knife i think this one cost me about eight pound fifty um now i will say something with folding knives obviously you can't be you know battening in with these knives you've got to be really careful it's a whittler's knife it's a small use knife um you can be very very careful easy rust um so you always got to be very careful keep them nice and clean this knife here extremely razor sharp out of the box i find um extremely razor sharp it has this little turner right here okay we're just going to rotate that and that locks the knife in effect so it's a, it is a locking knife which then makes it totally illegal now i don't want to go too much into the law because there's lots of videos out there about the law but is this knife you're going to get caught with this knife let's say you're walking through the street and it's in your pocket and you get caught with a fold and locking knife you're going to get arrested you've got no excuse to have this in a public domain or a public area uh, if you get caught with a knife like this or any of the knives that we have featured here you're going to get yourself in trouble luckily here at northern wilderness we can carry things like this this is our land our private place public are not allowed the signs are everywhere so this is why we recommend the use of things like bushcraft clubs to do this to go out and you can open carry in this area now what if is a question another question for you guys for the video what would happen to me or you if you had this knife on you you then went into let's say forestry commission land to do a sneaky wild camp while you were there uh, you you know found some broken tree you wanted to make a bench you made a shelter you had a camp you had a small fire uh, you put the fire out and you left and on the way out someone caught you you got stopped, you got questioned, you said you're illegally on the land, you've trespassed, you shouldn't be there, and you get caught with this in your pocket. Well, let's have a quick think about that. First of all, all you're doing is out camping, enjoying nature. But let's look at the laws that you've actually broken. Trespass, first of all, but not just any kind of trespass. You've actually went and trespassed on Royal or the Crown's land. That there's now treason because it's Forestry Commission land not just that because you've took this and axe and other things it's also classed as now armed trespass okay not just that you've lit a fire which is now looked upon as arson you've then 
destroyed some of the woodland by making a bench seat or taking down a broken tree which is already dead anyway but now we're looking at vandalism okay we're looking there at prison terms the knife itself can get you up to seven years imprisonment <laughs> some scary scary shit when you talk about this stuff I don't want to go too far into it but I would like you guys to find some facts out about what happens if you carry a folding knife and you get caught in the public what happens if you carry a folding knife onto the crown's land what is the crown's land educate yourself understand what the crown's land is the sea that's the crown's land so you've got to be very very careful but this knife here is one of my favorites so now we've got the legal side of things out the road folding knives are illegal simple fact down to the police officer though that catches you if you've got due if you've got a reason to have this knife i.e today i'm bushcraft steve i've got my hat on i've got my fial ravens on i've got my backpack i've got my tools i'm in the woods coming to and from the woods so i've got a reason to have a knife i've also got a reason to have an axe and a saw and other knives on me and the inside my bag apart from the axe which was on the outside of my bag now what you don't realise, travelling to and from the site like this with an axe on the outside of your bag is also illegal. You're using the road, which is public, uh, public area. Even though the bag could be inside the boot, the axe is still quite easy to reach and grab. The axe needs to be inside the bag, buried, so it's not easy to grab hold of. That way the police officer can be a bit more lenient. But let's say he is a royal twat. He will have you <laughs> and he can literally do you for having things like this. So. Now we've got that out of the road. I'm not going to go into how long a knife should be, legal stuff, you need to do your own research on that. I believe it's around about three inches or something, but I could be wrong, don't quote me. Okay knife, everyday knife, little pocket knife, it's absolutely fine. Like I said, is it legal to carry this knife? Um, it's funny because normal locking knives come out and click and lock into place. This has got to be twisted into place, and because it's got a twisted lock mechanism, it's tricky with the law. They're not really sure about how to classify this kind of knife. It's not a, it's not a, you know, um, a knife worked by friction, so you can flick it out. It's not a knife that's opened and locked, so you've got to twist it and lock it, but still a locking knife so there could still be the police if they wanted to be arses they could really really you know take it to town with open L but open L knives beautiful knives worth the money I do enjoy them but when you see these people on Facebook going oh and stake your life on it don't take it in the woods I've got one I've been doing this for like I said 30 odd years so you know I carry one why not I, I use it anyway let's have a look at the next knife our next knife here is the uh, what do you, how do you pronounce that oh, I don't know it's like a, I think it's French or something Quesh. Kusha, Kusho, Kusho. Anyway, this knife here is a stainless steel knife. I find the handle a little bit too robust. It's a camper knife, general basic camper knife, but stainless steel. Uh, the reason I carry one stainless steel knife for is for cooking uh, and stuff like that. Obviously, when I'm in the woods, by the way, this one here I will show you. It's got a little emergency or uh, um, little switch that you've got to push in to be able to pull the knife out and it locks in place. So, this is what we class as a locking knife. This is an illegal knife, okay? Now, we'll actually tell a lie it doesn't lock it just clicks into place but you can release the button to get out of its pouch so it doesn't lock so it's not illegal where well, it is illegal ah it's a tricky subject who cares anyway listen who got here rubberized plasticky grip something i don't like i'd prefer stainless steel knife in a wood handle which i might get another one but this one here was given to me as a gift uh, by one of our youtube subscribers so thanks dan for that it was absolutely fantastic of you last time he came down he gave us this now Stainless steel. Stainless steel is used for ocean salty areas. It's also used for cooking in wet areas and climates because it doesn't rust, okay, because it's stainless steel. Um, it doesn't hold the edge for as long, I believe, from what I've been told, and they also are harder to sharpen by all accounts. If you check this one out, again, it's got that secondary bevel on there, so it's easier for me to sharpen on that little tool. I don't care, it takes me seconds to sharpen it, it's got a little lanyard point on the end there and the knife clicks and falls away. So this is my clean cutting knife, they only use this here for food, fish, meat, things like that, okay, vegetables, whatever, whatever, whatever I'm cooking. Um, so that is a very important knife to have inside my kit and that goes my cookware kit. So these knives are separate from what hangs on my neck, goes my uh, cookware kit, little pocket knife, bushcraft belt knife, they're all different knives. So this one here is the Baco Laplander. Uh, you probably see a lot of bushcrafters swear by them. This again was a gift. It's not something that I would have went out and personally actually bought, um, although I would now after using it. Originally I would just buy the 2 dollars saws because I can get the exact same 
style stock for two ninety nine, and I've had them for three four years, and eventually they start going blunt. But they you know they do a lot of time. But once they're blunt, you throw them away. So it's a little it's bad for the environment because you are made a lot of plastic. This one I like it because you can change the blade when the blade wears out. Buy another blade. Um, or you can replace the handle and keep the original blade. Um, it comes with a bit of leather thonging on. When we use these, you put your hands out as if to say, pay me fool. Once you do that, flip your hand over. Now what my hand's done is create a choke on this. So when I'm sewn, if I slip in the rain, my hand can't go any further. The thing can't slip out, it falls, I've got older. it. I'm not going to get hurt in any way by that. So this is why we use a lanyard. Lanyards are great also on other tools like some knives but again a swinging knife you've got to be careful with if you're up high in a tree it's something you might want to use. Machetes and parangs very careful. They do get them on there and they do come in handy when you're up a tree but if you miss a machete and it swings slips out your hand you've got a good chance of chopping a leg off. Now this here has a button here it says press just in case you're not that clever. When you press this the actual blade will open up and lock into position. So now we have a locking tool. This is like a locking knife. Again, could be classed as a weapon. Got some teeth on there. Okay, so we've got a good range of teeth on here for backwards and forwards motion. They've got a good bite and they're pretty, pretty, and they're pretty sharp. You know what I mean? You've got to think about the price and stuff with these. But it is a nice bit of kit. Open L make a lovely saw as well, but it's all about weight again. Uh, this one I find is quite light, how it's got the rubberized grip as well for rainy, wet weather. But this is a basic folding saw, so it's classed as pruning saw, DIY shops, garden shops, things like that. It's a very simple thing. It goes in your pocket, it goes in your belt, it goes in your bag, whatever you want to use it for. And we use this for cutting all kinds of wood. So a folding saw is a, is a very important tool to have for making firewood and many other different things, different tasks. One of my favourite tools. This one here, I've got a few of these. This here is a Hulter Force axe. You just turn around. <laughs> You'll have seen a few of these guys here uh, in my videos. This one here I picked for about 22 quid or something like that. Uh, I made the little leather sheath for myself. I got it without the sheath. You can buy them on eBay without the sheath. Um, this here really, you can class this as a Scandi. Because, <laughs> well, it's made in Scandinavia. But yeah, it's got a, it's got a continuous you know, a continuous edge, there's no bevel inside there. Um, so go straight down to the point. Uh, very easy to sharpen, you use a puck for this and the puck, you would just rotate it on the edge of the puck, keeping the, the edge very, very flat on it. I'm not gonna do a video on sharpening, there's millions out there to do on sharpening knives and axes and stuff like that. But yeah, this is a ideal tool. Now, this one here, I'm gonna put my sheath back on so I don't chop any fingers or arms off, because I tend to do that. If I show you the size of this, so, for my hand, just past the crease, I went to edge of my tip of my finger, like that, good, good, you can see here, the crease to the tip of my finger. So that is what I call a hand axe hatchet, or uh, uh, basically, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a camp axe. It's not gonna fell, well it could, I suppose, if you really want to work hard, you could fell a massive tree with it, but I wouldn't recommend it. But it is gonna take out trees, you know, anything, you can have a good diamond or something like that, you know. Um, bit of hard work, but this here is what I would split a lot of wood with. It's not massively big, it's a good, decent size. It's got a nice bit of cleav cleavage and weight to it. Bring it through, can strike. It's got a good, solid head on it. And I do not actually know the weight of this head, so if anyone knows the weight of this head, um, comment on the video below, let us know. Is that this here axe works perfect for me. It's a good little axe, many different kinds, traditional kinds. You've got Greensworth, Greensworth Brooks and all these other kind of axes now uh, on the market. Up to you, watch some videos, learn about them. But this axe here, I've had this one five years or something, five, six years, uh, solid bit of kit. Don't use it all the time. I've got a slightly longer pull of falls, uh, which normally I use as well, which comes all the way up to about here. Um, and it's called the hunting axe. Uh, but both axes are absolutely outstanding. Up to you what you want to pay on them. I like this one, it's a wood handle. If I snap the handle, I can make one. This particular handle is made of hickory. I can make and handle if I want to make one and I break it. The head can be reused, and you can see it's got the pin in the top section there. All right, so it's pretty simple. This part of the axe is the hammer, or some people call it the butt. This is the belly, this is the spine of the back there. knife. Here's a butt again, lanyard hole. Again, I'm not really a fan of having lanyards in the bottom of me in case you'd slip and it comes off and it can hack into you. I'd rather have it just hit the floor and fall away from me. All right guys, so if you're new to bushcraft, or if you're a seasoned bushcrafter and you're just looking at different things and looking about, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's basically just the tools that I use, okay? So inside my kit, just to break for the last moment, belt knife, 
which I may wear on my belt, holster knife, which I may hang here, too many knives maybe. Both of these are carbon, also both of these carry a spark, also with this I have the ferrocium rod on the side of the knife to light fire with. In case I have left my knives at base camp and I've went for a little walk and people are around whatever but I do have a little open L knife, pocket knife, in case I see something I want to cut you know or use or whatever I've got a little open L knife in my pocket. In my kit bag for food I have a stainless steel knife for cooking with, for working with fish, for all sorts of things, salty environments and stuff like that. So this is my little knife that I keep inside my food bag. That's my knives. Outside of the knives I have a saw edge tool. From the saw I then have a axe. Up to you what budget you want to spend. You can go nuts, you can spend up £300 on a knife, you can spend a couple hundred quid on an axe. Up to yourself. Size of your wallet, it's all good. However, if you do walk into the woods and you wear them as jewellery, you're more likely going to get laughed at by other people when they realise that you just wear them as jewellery. Don't wear them as jewellery guys, buy something you're going to enjoy, something you're going to use and don't be scared of using it. The maker I think will be quite shocked that you didn't use their knives. I know I don't use my rear maze woodlaw knife and the reason I don't use it for is because I've got knives like this one that do the exact same job and I find it a lot easier. I'd be pretty gutted if I did lose or break my knife or cost 300 quid or 600 quid. This knife here, 25, 30 quid. If I break it, it's not the end of the days. So remember guys, up to you and up to your budget. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time guys, remember, leave no trace but knowledge. I'm out. Thank you.